A lot of stuff you do in games just messes everything up. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, 10 video game actions that crash your game. Starting off at number 10 in WWE 2K20, playing the game on January 1st, 2020. Like WWE 2K20 was and still is a mess of a game, but most of its many, many bugs are not game breaking. This bug though would absolutely crash your game, all for the crime of playing it in the year 2020. Yeah, it's basically Y2K all over again. For whatever reason, WWE 2K20 would completely crash the game as players booted it up in the new year. And it definitely had something to do with the year 2020 because the method to get around this was to set your system clock to the previous year. I mean, all right, so it's a bug that 2K managed to squash relatively quickly, but once again, it is one of many, many bugs. It is just beyond ridiculous though. This is a game literally called WWE 2K20. And if you tried to play it in the year that the game itself takes place in, it would crash. It's just another thing to add to the pile of things that make this game an absolute mess but it's perhaps the most glaring, ridiculous, and yes, game-breaking. At number nine in Modern Warfare 3, try staying close to some friendly tanks as they go down a specific street in the goalpost level. This will cause the infamous reliable command buffer overflow bug. It's super annoying, and I'll go into a little bit more detail. On the PC in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, you have to go exactly where the game wants you to go at a certain moment, or the game will crash. This reliable command buffer overflow can happen a few different spots in the game, but the most well-known and therefore most reliable command buffer overflow is this part of the level goal post and act two of the game. After you leave the parking garage section level, you're supposed to keep pushing down the road, but if you actually do that, the game is likely to crash. And it's not something that's been totally fixed either. There's still people complaining about this glitch out there even now and it's even specifically referred to on this game's entry on the pc gaming wiki so it's a pretty common problem actually what you're supposed to do is go into the side building and continue down that way instead of continuing to move forward there's no way to continue down the road like you eventually hit a dead end even if you aren't affected by the glitch by some miracle still it's probably one of those bizarre ways to crash a game going down a road rather than into a building at number eight, in Half-Life 2, when you lure a poison head crab zombie into a barnacle. So the barnacle is one of the Half-Life series' most annoying enemies, and if you've played it, you know exactly what we're talking about. These monsters that hang from the ceiling and they try to grab you with their big tongues, they're pretty indiscriminate about what they'll eat too, save for one thing, the poison head crab zombies. For whatever reason, the game cannot handle it if a barnacle manages to grab one of these guys. Because of that, they never put the two of them together in a way that makes it likely they'll end up touching, but it's pretty simple to summon one of these zombies near a barnacle just to see what'll happen. And yeah, it still works even now. The game just immediately crashes if one of these nasty dudes touches the tongue of a barnacle. I guess it has something to do with the physics engine. I mean, I don't really know, but it always works like consistently. And number seven on the Normandy in Mass Effect 3, if you stand on the exact wrong spot on the bridge, you know, the command center for you know, the entire three game series, you find the wrong spot between Joker and Edie and you will get stuck permanently. It's not a full-blown crash, like the game continues to run, however, it's useless completely in every way you can think of. You can't keep playing the game, period. And it's so bad in that it happens in a place that you'd think was safe, like the bridge. Most players that get hit by this bug are forced to reload a save. That's like an hour old or, you know. Oftentimes an autosave isn't a great thing to lean on. And who really expects the game to freeze in the heart of the ship, the place you spend probably the most reliable amount of time constantly there, was safe in the last two Mass Effect games, but just sticks you there for good in Mass Effect 3. And it's still an issue, at least if this comment from January this year on the official EA Supports forum can be believed. Uh, it is the original version of Mass Effect 3, not the redone one, but I mean, it still has a ton of issues, that version of the game. Few as blatantly bad as this one, though. And number six, 
if you play too many hours in Oblivion. Now, the Elder Scrolls games are meant to be played for a very long time. There's a ton of content, and if you want to do all of it, it's going to take literally hundreds of hours. For players that like to spend a lot of time with the game, that's no big deal, but the issue here is that the game starts to break down the longer you end up playing it. The issue is actually fairly common with a lot of their games. Fallout New Vegas has the same issue where the game starts to run slower and less stable the more you play, but Oblivion probably has it the worst, especially on consoles. Known as the A-bomb bug, you have to play the game for an extremely long time, like 400, 500 hours. But when it hits, it hits hard. Generally, it starts making everything slow down, like animations, like opening doors play out much slower than they're supposed to. But what's really game breaking is that stuff like oblivion gates just stop working, like regular dungeon gates even stop functioning. You can't progress in the game without those things. It all seems to be some kind of memory leak issue, and players have used dozens of different methods to work around it. But if you're playing on consoles like Xbox 360, you're basically screwed. There's something absurd about the fact that Oblivion is so intentionally long, but if you actually do try to do everything in it, there's a good chance the game will eventually become unplayable. I feel like there is a Bethesda game metaphor in there somewhere. At number five in Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, when you use the tunnels. Uh, when it first came out, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood had a pretty nasty bug. All you had to do was use the tunnels that act like sort of a fast travel system in the game. That's it, just use them, and then the game would be totally broken. Wow, neat. For some reason, it would be impossible to leave the damn tunnels, and Ezio would get stuck just going through the tunnels forever. What made this worse is there was nothing you could do if you got hit by this bug. You'd be trapped down there forever. The only fix was to start a new game and hope it didn't happen again. Now, what makes this so bad is that the tunnels were not optional. You had to go through them as part of a mission at least once. So it was basically a roll of the dice every time you'd be continuing to play. And Ubisoft eventually, they did fix the bug, but it took them a while, let's say, for something this game breaking and unfortunately necessary to possibly trigger every time you play the game. There's something almost creepy pasta like about this bug. You go into these dark tunnels and you could be trapped there forever. It'd be really spooky if it wasn't so infuriating. At number four in Mario Kart DS, holding two buttons and turning. Uh, it's one of the most randomly specific, but really easy to replicate bugs I have ever seen. Uh, to crash Mario Kart DS, like literally freeze the game right on the spot. All you have to do is play the Luigi's Mansion track, drive until you get to the steps that lead to the mansion, and then hold A and B at the same time and turn. That's it, game freezes. It's kind of shocking that something that easy to repeat was missed during bug testing, but here it is. They did fix it on later releases, like the version on the Wii U Virtual Console, but the original DS freezes every time at this moment. Like if you're playing on the original hardware, that's that. There's not a lot to say about this one, it's about as basic as it gets. There's plenty of speculation as to why it actually happens. Uh, some say it's supposed to play a sound that doesn't exist or that it's related to how the game handles out of bounds stuff, but we don't really know why this is just a thing, just that it is a thing. So yeah. At number three, Pandora's Tower, going to the same floor twice. It's a pretty legit Wii exclusive action RPG. If you've ever played Pandora's Tower, you basically explore this tower and attempt to save your girlfriend from this nasty curse. It's a pretty good game. It's a little rare to find these days, but for some reason, the US version has this really infamous bug that will for sure kill your game dead. For some reason, when you go to the 11th and 12th floor of the tower, if you happen to leave, then come back at any time, game will freeze. And keep in mind, this isn't a game where you expect to get through the dungeons in one go. The whole point you're supposed to go back and forth, entering and leaving the dungeon at certain points. So in fact, near the end of the game, you suddenly hit with a crash if you do the thing you've been doing the entire game. Up to this point, it's pretty nasty. It's even more bizarre that this only happens with the US physical version of the game. You buy it digitally, it's fine. European physical version of the game, fine. Now, apparently it was some kind of defect on the US discs, like literally printed onto them. So when you find this now super expensive physical version of the US game, you are getting the version of the game that is objectively the worst. If you're aware of the bug, it's possible to get around. But if you're not, then it's a nasty surprise that only only hit you after a couple dozen hours of progress. And number two in Batman Arkham Origins, if you enter the My Alibi nightclub, 
for some reason, it causes this infamous game breaking bug. So what happens, you go into this bar in the game and it'll sometimes lead to the map failing to load. Like Batman just drops into this black void of nothing and you can't escape. Probably wouldn't be so bad though if the game didn't auto save literally a second you enter this place, effectively trapping you inside this abyss forever. If that happens, it's basically it. You're stuck here. Time to start a new game and just hope that it doesn't happen again. This is a major problem on pretty much every platform but these days it seems mostly fixed except the PC. Of course, this is not an optional nightclub. It's a place you eventually have to go into, so there's always a chance of this total reset hanging over anyone who enters. The whole thing is a huge reason why developers really need to let players manually save, or at least make multiple auto save backups, because at least then they'd be able to load an older save and continue rather than be forced to play through the entire game over again just because of a stupid glitch. Thankfully, it seems like more games are going in this direction so while they can be pretty damn buggy at least you're not going to lose all your progress in this same way at number one cyberpunk's game breaking glitches nearly a year after release cyberpunk 2077 still has a lot of issues and that includes game breaking bugs most of these aren't that interesting a lot of people are still experiencing random crashes when they try to start the game when they're using the gog launcher along with all sorts of random crashes on the desktop those kinds of things are annoying but they're not always necessarily totally game breaking the worst glitches are the ones where missions just don't work one common issue we've seen people complain about is is the walk the line mission the one where you're sent to the grand imperial mall sometimes and no one has any real reason why this happened just that it does but sometimes all the doors to the place will be closed and there's just no way inside you just can't get in cd project red the developers have offered workarounds for people but it seems like a total crap shoot if any of them actually work or not this wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if it was just some side mission or something but no you have to finish it to beat the game getting stuck here completely stops your progress and even with the newest patches, it's still a thing that isn't working for a lot of people. We don't always want to be dogging on Cyberpunk here, but it's a game that has a lot of glaring issues, and this game-breaking bug is one of the worst. And speaking of the end of the day, that is all for today. Leave us a comment, let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. The best way to see them first is a course of subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable all notifications, and as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon, you can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time, right here on Gamer.